TTM Radon is an idiot. TTM Radon is an idiot. Um, <clears throat> so y'all see that? He's calling me an idiot, right? You no, know, and like, I hope, I hope that nobody has sent him money for anything. Bit. So he's saying he hopes nobody has sent me money for anything. But uh, anyway, in other news, um, so it's come to my attention that uh, DJ Vect, this guy right here, DJ Vect, uh, has been spreading lies. And um, I did a video clearing up those lies, but I hadn't seen this video when I made that video. I had just heard, you know, and I had just, you know, talked about stuff that he had lied about in the past about me. But uh, in this video right here, he's in the video literally lying and trying to, uh, you know, call me all these names and, and stuff like that. So I, I'm going to do this video so I can clear up the misconceptions in real time or really clear up the slander and the lies in real time. All right. So shout out to everybody that's in the house. All right. So let's uh, press play. All right. So let's see. Uh, so these are some very very bold lies so uh, this is about the Kickstarter this is about the skater girl Kickstarter um, and uh, you know we're, we're gonna be talking about that today so this is about the skater girl Kickstarter and the skater girl 12 inch that comes with it um, and uh, some people were confused I guess Vect was confused that this is skater girl a feature film that comes with a 7 inch so this Kickstarter that raised 10,000 bucks was is not just a 7 inch it was it's a it's a full length feature film with a seven inch single from the soundtrack on side A and then side B is uh, the battle record part right but side A is also a battle record too like you know you can it's skipless um, the whole soundtrack is actually going to be skipless and I, and I've gone into all the um, side A and all that stuff in uh, the actual the last video I did. Uh, regarding um, lies that Vec was putting out there. Really a lot of disses. He's called me a scumbag, called me, you know, all, all different types of names. But all that stuff was seen. And, you know, he had a bunch of Reddit trolls that were coming for me and stuff like that. You know, it's just a bunch of, uh, like, a lot of bigotry. Because the thing is, is that a lot of people don't understand is that if you have, uh, you know, if 10 dudes are screaming at a woman, then that's going to be sexist. Um, and if 10 dudes from France, Euro diaspora dudes, are screaming at a black dude in France, then that's going to be a racial incident. incident. Even if uh, they don't spit any racial epithets or anything like that, um, it is still a, a racial thing. You know, anytime there's a group of Europeans ganging up on a, on a black dude, like myself. So we're going. So I'm going to start up. I'm going to press play. So we're going to. This we're going to be listening to uh, some lies that uh, Vex's been spreading. And just so you know, Vect uh, was a supporter of the, of the Kickstarter, so he'll be getting his copy when the film comes out. And just so you see that the film is coming out this summer, so it's 2021, all right? So this is, uh, Vect apparently didn't read, right? He didn't read the, the blatant thing that said this is a, fun, a film fundraiser, not a fundraiser for a battle record. All right, so let's go back, all right? Oops. Oops, not that one. This one right here, let's go. That one, okay, I think I know who submitted that one. That one, I'm, I'm like, wondering, like, is... is did okay, so you can see right here, some guys, like, you keep plunking that TTM dude, thank you. 
or punking. So this is just to show that, you know, I'm being bullied on the internet, you know, Vect and a bunch of Reddit people. Let's see what this guy looks like, DJ Curry. Let's just look at DJ Curry for a second. Because these are the people that are harassing me all online, you know, on all different types of platforms, Facebook, Reddit, you know, YouTube, just all types of trolling. All right. Um, so, yeah, this is this guy who's, you know, so you can see these are the people that are that are trolling me. This this dude right here. So it's bedroom DJs that are trolling me. Right. There's no black DJs trolling me. There's no Mexican DJs trolling me. All right. So this is where we were. OK, so let's play that again. They even like. Uh... It, it almost sounds like it's just like a rock song. Like, I'm not sure what production was was in it. Or maybe they play guitar and they like played stuff. Whatever. Whoever did that, it sounds pretty authentic. Um, <laughs> keep plunking the TDM, dude. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta spread the good word that... that... So, keep, so he's laughing when the guy's saying, uh, keep punking Ray, the TTM dude, that's me. The, the the TTM radon is an idiot. Um. So y'all see that? He's calling me an idiot, right? So he's literally nonstop, uh, you know, just dissing me, lying. You know, I've never, I've all, anytime that I've made a video about Vect, it's been me responding to his lies or to his slanders or, or whatever. So I'm always just replying to him. So this is a new thing. I'm replying to this. You know, everybody's got to know. <sighs> Guys just like being you know just being really uh he's just a negative dude he's just trying to attack everybody and he scam people for money he's so he's lying right there so one he's saying i'm a negative dude well, people know that know me know i'm i'm a pacifist i'm a, a very positive person i'm a vegan um but i i tell the truth and a lot of times people don't like hearing the truth or you know when people speak out you know, and I speak out about social issues and social justice. I'm one of the few turntablists that's actually doing so. And I, I'm the only turntablist that has a network that's actually uh, dealing with turntablist social issues. Everybody else is, is sweeping stuff under the rug, you know. You know. So, yes, I've been draining the turntablist swamp recently. And, and uh, you know, in the past year, um, ever since Kubert came out with all that All Lives Matter, anti-George Floyd stuff, you know, I've been reporting um, turntablist um, social issues, you know, um, social issues that apply to, uh, you know, the, the realm of turntablism. All right. So he's saying and he's saying I'm a scammer, which is a lie, because he's trying to say that, uh, you know, he's trying to say that the money was collected for this Kickstarter. And he's trying to say that nobody ever got their seven inches. But if you go to the site, it clearly says that it'll be shipped with the actual film and the film is coming out this year right this is the film directed by me written by me starring uh humana balmori very talented actress michael holman you might recognize him from uh he was in graffiti rock he he started the first hip-hop public access show called graffiti rock he was also in a band with uh jean-michel basquiat called gray as well as uh another filmmaker vincent gallo was also in that band at another point and then also Marley Renee, very, very talented actress. And there's a bu bunch of other actresses and actors that are in this. So this is a real film that's really coming out this year. So the seven inches attached to that. So Ve Vex's been spreading the lie that I've been scamming people, right? That's why I had to make this, because that's a very serious accusation. And he's and watch, you're going to see him tell people, don't give Radon money. Listen. This actual scammer con artist. And it's like, you know, people have to know. Our scene is small enough that people don't like make a big deal out of that, but it's like. So he said scammer con artist, right? So that's a really, really big lie. That's why I'm making this video to show that, you know, this whole him saying scammer, scammer con artist is that's a very, very serious allegation, you know. But we have the proof that he's lying, right? I just showed you the proof. It's a film that's coming out this year, and the record's attached to the film. It wasn't just. I was raising for money for a battle record. I, I never did a Kickstarter like that. I did a fundraiser for an actual film that had a lot of different elements. And we're going to look at some of the other elements of the film. Not only does it include a, a record, it includes you get the periodic matrix, you get the TTM ASCII character set, which is, you know, was completed a few years ago. Um, this, this was a lot of stuff for me to design. And then you're going to get the, uh, the iPod. Uh, 
version or the, the DVD version or, you know, the digital versions, right? So everybody's going to get sent this package in the mail when the film's complete, right? Okay, so let's go back. All right, so, um, and, and in the past uh, lecture on uh, VECT, I explained the fact that, you know, in the film world, you know, it's not uh, strange for a film to come out five years later, six years later. If anybody knows David Lynch's first film, his famous film Eraserhead, his first full length, uh, it took him about eight to ten years to actually, you know, put out. You know, film is a very complicated process, especially when you're dealing with lower budgets. Usually the smaller the budget, the longer things take because, you know, you know, time and money have a have a um, have a relationship, right? All right, so I'm gonna press play. You know, <clears throat> I always thought it was weird that like he like you would think like i i don't pay attention to like a lot of like kickstarter stuff in general but um like i know like there's there's been kickstarters for like retro video games or or something like that and if it passes like 2 years and people like haven't got their stuff like people start getting their pitchforks out um this dude radon did a, a kickstarter he collected money 6 years ago um for a film Right for a film that's coming out this year, right? Because you know we we have it took you know a lot of years for us to get the right funding, getting the right actors. We brought Michael Holman into the project. Like I was saying, this is Michael Holman. We brought Michael Holman into the project um, about a few years ago, and yeah. So this is Michael Holman. I mean, this is you know Basquiat in the picture, but Michael Holman is not actually in the picture. But you know, this is some things he's directed, some things he's been a part of. You might have seen Michael Holman in a lot of uh, documentaries. The art kind of hip hop documentary, hip Michael Holman is most likely gonna be in it. He's actually playing the father in the film and we were able to bring him into the project, you know, a little bit later. We didn't have him at the project at the beginning. He was the ideal person I wanted to play the dad. and. And he accepted the role, so we were super, super psyched. So thanks so much, Michael Holman, for being part of the project. All right, and let me uh, type in here too. I'm gonna type eraser head, eraser head. How long to film? Um, so let's see, eraser head. Let me click. So yeah, Eraserhead took about five years, about the same time. All right, so um, yeah, so we just saw that. Let me click back. I just saw something that was talking about it. So yeah, it says Eraserhead, 12 hair-raising facts about Eraserhead. So let's see, back in 1907, no one ever heard of the term Lynchian. In fact, no one ever heard of David Lynch. Um, so let's see, here's the, let's skip ahead. All right. Anxieties, uh, okay, yeah, so it took five years to finish the film. So Eraserhead was in production for five years, largely because Lynch kept running out of money. As I was saying before, when you're doing independent and small indie projects, well, I won't call it small, I'll just call it independent, because it is a massive project that, uh, that we worked on, that we created. He relied on AFI, his parents, and several friends for financial support, and picked up another one other unusual source of funding. Uh, we don't see what that is. Oh, uh, Lynch paid for it with his newspaper route, <laughs> right? So yeah, so you know, took a simple. That was his first film, and Skater Girl is my first film. All right, so you know, and in the last lecture, I think we covered like uh, one, another one of my favorite directors, um, Kubrick. You know, Kubrick had spaces of seven years between films. You know. When you're working on something and you're, you know, a perfectionist, sometimes things take a long time. And that's the cool thing. That's one thing I love about film is that, you know, you can take your time with it. There's never a rush with a full length film, right? With music video, you know, I've done over um, 80 music videos. And usually with music videos, things are rushed and, you know, you're on a time uh, clock or whatever. But yeah, let me keep playing. And he hasn't made the record or anything. He says, I haven't made the record, which, which he's lying. Um, the record is coming with the album, um, with the actual release of the DVD, like I was showing you on here. You can see the, the record is coming with the actual shipment of the actual product. And also in the last video, I gave a preview of side two that's already been out, 
right side side B has been out for a minute. Like I'm gonna click. Uh, this is another track off the album. I'm gonna show you this. But I'm gonna actually uh, find side B. Let me find Sneaky. side B. Yeah, I, I mean side A. To... The A side of the the 12 inch has been out digitally for a second. Make money with properties you don't own. Check All this. Right, so I'm gonna go to here. <laughs> Or maybe I put it at the end. Maybe it's at the end. Yeah, this is side. Oops, not showing it. There we go. Side A. So yeah, so side A's been out, you know, and all the Kickstarter supporters, anybody that's had questions on Kickstarter, I clearly uh, um, wrote up here. So yeah, originally, you know, when we first planned to do it, we were first planned to do it during the summer and send the. Uh, the soundtrack stuff immediately, but you know, we decided to send everything together as a finished package, and we notified everybody about that on the other pages. You know, we got a there's a Skater Girls um, on Facebook, on you know the TTM site. You know, the reason we stopped, uh, the main reason we stopped posting on here, I think I have it up here. Let's see, I think I let's see. So it says, "Sub everyone, please go to uh, skatergirl.net for film updates, info, and turntablists waiting for the battle record and tax." All right. Um, so um, the reason we stopped posting on Kickstarter is we are no longer updating this Kickstarter page frequently. Frequent, frequently. Um, also, James Trice, if you're friends with the director on Facebook, why not ask him personally? Right? Because um, we, me and James already spoke and. You know, I told him it's shipping with the actual uh, movie. Also, we had a, we had witnessed a number of um, racist and sexist Kickstarter projects, so we decided not to post updates on here frequently due to the due to the fact that 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 type of intolerance creeps us out. So please send questions to the above links, right? So you know, we found a lot of um, like racial racist. Uh, projects on Kickstarter so we you know stop using Kickstarter you know to to give updates we don't support that site you know uh, all right uh. so let's see is he still talking about it and we're gonna get that up there in one second let's see oh. <clears throat> there um yeah hopefully people see it but yeah <clears throat> so watch, he keeps going. What? Where it's Nick. That is that's the best advice. <laughs> Basically, like yeah, I'm trying not to uh, really like worry about it or like really um, give much time to it. For me, the only the main thing is uh, basically i just don't want people like giving him money and stuff because that's that's basically what i see him doing is so you all heard that y'all heard it from his mouth this is a, a euro diaspora male saying he doesn't want people he's spreading uh lies and and saying that there's a project that was you know the ball was dropped and was never delivered even though the project clearly states it's coming out in 2021 um, he's saying, don't give me money. Don't give a black male money. So what does that mean? You know, in the history of, uh, of this continent, right? He's from, uh, Canada, right? If we're going to talk about the history of North America, there's been a long lineage of people like him, of the Euro diaspora, um, you know, trying to thwart people or prohibit people or, uh, discourage people from engaging in buying in black business, right? So that's nothing new. You know, and a lot of people don't know is that most lynchings were actually from black business owners. So, you know, they've been, you know, like how he was talking about people rolling around with pitchforks. They've literally been rolling around with digital pitchforks trying to, uh, like, digitally lynch me or something. All right. With all these Reddit trolls, because people know that Reddit is a known uh, site for for bigotry. All right. And we proved that in the last video. All right. So this, I'm going to keep playing. He's threatening to sue people, hoping that they'll like give him money. Like he's basically so he's talking about the uh, Grimm's, uh, me sending Grimm's and skills of cease and desist. So my main objective with that is not to get money from them. My main objective is for them to cease and desist, plagiarizing my TTM, my internationally recognized TTM motifs. Um, and you know that, that's number one is for them to stop. That's what the cease and desist is about. But also, as with any lawsuit. You know, there are, you know, legal fees if 
something happens. Um, and also, um, you know, I'm looking for, you know, if somebody does uh, plagiarize my stuff, then I'm open to having licensing fees and working with the people, but they're not trying to do any type of licensing fee. So then, you know, they're technically asking for a lawsuit. All right. Now, um, so let's go to the, uh, let's, let's play it again. All right. He's sending fake cease and desist. Yo, nope, not a fake cease and desist. Real, real cease and desist. Real, definitely cease and desist. So everything he's saying is lying. Like we just, we just, I just calculated like five lies. That you know, right? That's a lot of lies. All right. And just like, just like for sort of uh, transparency, like I know more than what's out there of stuff. Um, and I know more people. So you, you know more out there. This is uh, that's called gaslighting, uh, or not gaslighting. That's called uh, you know, spreading a conspiracy. He's spreading a conspiracy that there's more, um, you know, that that there's more uh, pe people that were scammed or something. But it's like no, it's just waiting on this uh, this vinyl, right? This is a movie that's coming out. You click back, waiting on the movie. So you're waiting on the movie, and the movie and the vinyl, everything's being sent in one package. You know, originally we were going to send multiple packages, but, you know, decided it's a lot easier just to, you know, just send a final package. Once the film's done, we're sending all the physical products, you know. So people that already inboxed us, they already got the side A of the uh, battle record, you know, and it's side B that's coming out with the movie this year because that's the actual scratch part. We wanted to keep that special because it has a special technology that's never been done before. Right, this is going to totally change the game in in uh, skipless skipless vinyl, and we decided too also to make a 12 inch version of it too. So not only is it, you know the 12 inch version is not going to be sent with the packages, just the seven inch version, but we're going to have the 12 inch versions available as well. All right, so let's uh, flip back. All right, people who have been affected by this scammer. So it's like. I just like, you know, it's like on one hand, I don't even want to say anything. I don't even want to like talk about him. But on the other hand, it's like you kind of have to let people know that this dude's whack or else some people will think that he's that he's like legit, you know? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it's legit. This is legit. This is a real film. It's actually um, very, very legit. All right. And if we're going to talk about whackness, uh, you know, we can uh, just look at that. You know, and like, I hope, I hope that nobody has sent him money for anything. But so he's saying he hopes nobody has sent me money for anything, right? So you know, I, I'm uh, in the business of uh, you know selling TTM products all the time. You know, from you know Matrix posters to you know the new uh, BPM protractors, slip mats to all types of things. You know, he's literally trying to F with my paper, right? Now, in all the videos I've made of Vecchio, as far as responding to him lying about me um, publicly, uh, I've never tried to diss his paper. I never said, you know, uh, don't buy, don't go to a Vec show, you know, like um, everything is me usually responding to his, you know, all his falsehoods, all these things. You know, he's literally lying, right? And the thing is, is that, you know, let's say you take Jay-Z versus Nas or, you know, even Biggie versus Tupac. Even in Biggie versus Tupac, Tupac never said, don't buy a Biggie album, you know. So that's a that's a very deep-seated thing to say, like, don't give somebody else paper. Don't financially support somebody. And he, um, you know, the second he gets his project, he is, um, you know, he'll be getting it this year when everybody uh, gets their projects in the mail because he was one of the supporters. And uh, thanks to all the supporters, but him being one of the supporters, you know, this actually puts him in a legal situation where he's literally slandering me, and this is liable to typing it and slander on the internet and uh, you know on forums, threads. You know, I show that in the other thing, but in the other video, I didn't have this actual video proof of him literally, you know, slandering and dissing me live, right? So, yeah, so this is him literally live doing it, right? Um, yeah, so you know, you know, these are clearly falsehoods, and you know, I can actually um, sue him in the future f um, for for lying. You know, telling people I'm a scammer and stuff. You know.
basically is what I hope. But I know, like, there's another dude in in the turntable scene. Like, this is a similar thing, but like, basically, I know that he's whack. Uh, and so no, notice he said whack like four times, right? And look look how these guys look at this DJ Curry guy. You know he's going after skills. Dude's calling everyone racist. Um, yeah, I'm bringing up social issues in uh, in in turntablism like when last year when dj Kubert said that uh you know um was posted an anti-george floyd uh video and he was saying all lives matter um you know i i i had to speak about that story about um how dj craze came for cuber because cuber you know dj craze came for cuber and called him out and you know i had to call um speak about that you know i've been silent for years you know, um, actually, I've been blacklisted for years, you know, in terms of tableism, but this is the first year I started being vocal. And uh, people think that I'm that, you know, I'm rubbing people the wrong way or whatever. But it's like, yo, you know, uh, the truth is the truth. Or, you know, even if it's an allegation, an allegation is an allegation. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, talking about allegations or talking about social issues that deal with turn tableists. Okay. All right, so I'm going to press play. He's blocked me on everything. And the dude, like, did, like, a GoFundMe. He's, lock he's lying. He just blocked me on this account today, or maybe, like, two days ago, or in the, in the past 24 hours. So he's the one that's actually blocked me. I'm all about transparency, because he actually made a post on his page saying, like, oh, he's scamming people. The Kickstarter's not, you know, he never sent anybody anything. And then I, I posted the link. If you go to his page, you'll see it on there if he didn't delete it. I posted the link um, with uh, the fact that, you know, the Skater Girl movie's coming out, everybody's going to get their vinyl that's attached to the movie, right? So he's so he's lying on that, too. So, so we've just caught, like, ten lies, you know? all the, That's a lot of lies. Me for, for, like, fake health issues and stuff like that. And, like, I know, like, I know and other people know that he's a healthy dude um like obviously not mentally but physically and it's like a scam um and uh now he's talking about somebody else yeah it's 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 uh you know it, it's kind of uh it, it sucks that there's people like that out there I, I don't know what you can do other than like sort of make people aware um and like just like if you are a person out there just like you know like and you'd see people like this you got, you got just do your research, I guess, or I don't know. Like, exactly. And that's why we're here doing the research. And the research shows that you're a liar, <laughs> right? Or I'm sorry, the research shows that uh, Vect is lying, you know, about me. Okay. So th these guys have been trolling me for, for weeks, ever since I, you know, sought to stick up for myself and send skills and grims a cease and desist you know the main reason i was doing that is because i'm not trying to have skills and uh skills i'm sorry i'm not trying to have grims make ttm shoes and ttm hats and you know because already if, if you anywhere i go on the net i see that battle record now right like i could just go to a random place like i could probably even go down here and see you know i see the ad everywhere i go right okay so i'm gonna keep press play you know um, don't jump on the bag bandwagon and just like think everybody's a good person right away. Um, yeah, bad karma exactly. Oh, I know. It's not the first video he's made dissing me either. He's 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 dissed me many times. So the the first video was a response to him dissing me. I've never just come out and dissed him. I would have no reason to just diss people. I'm not like Vect, but we know for I I can prove for a fact that Vect has dissed multiple people you know in the industry uh and even sent them letters you know saying uh, apologizing you know apologizing you know that he's dissing them uh, privately but dissing people publicly just for clout you know he's trying to be like uh you know like kind of a, a clout type of scratcher or something you know he's kind of making that part of his whole thing of like he you know gets in beefs with other djs or whatever but um yeah so um, so yeah, the first video was just about the I, the IDA stuff, um, you know, because for about two years straight, I actually um, 
officiated the IDA USA and brought it back because, you know, Antrix had dropped the ball and, you know, I had uh, contacted uh, Mr. Um, with Thomas, Tomas from Poland and, uh, you know, and I, I was able to help bring it back. All right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> and in the second video was responding to him and Reddit trolls, you know, accosting me and spreading lies and trolling me in all different places, even going to my friends. Like, uh, one of his trolls, one of these trolls, uh, this one guy from Poland, uh, I guess it's Masiej, I'm not sure how you pronounce the name, but he, um, was going to one of my friends, I believe it was Eddie Mariano, and he was like, you know, um, shout out to Eddie Mariano, right, Scratch Ranch TV, big up Eddie Mar Mariano, uh, you know, homie from the West Coast, and he was, uh, one of his trolls was going to Eddie, like, trying to get Eddie to hate on me, and Eddie's just like, yo, man, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist, you know, I'm all about peace, I'm outside of all this drama you're trying to uh, get me to be a part of, like, so he's literally got fans trying to, you know, diss me, inbox me, I mean, uh, like, uh, troll my friends and trying to get my friends to dislike me, you know, like, I've never done any of that to him, and I would never do that to anybody, that's just some, some weirdo stuff. <laughs> but it's like, I don't, I don't really care, I don't know. Basically, like, what I've realized <clears throat> in my turntable career, you know, like, especially, like, having, you know, won battles and stuff like it's just like like with every time you do things there's more people who like you you, you attract more like negative angry weirdo people as well you know it's, it's not very it's not a very high who's the negative angry weirdo like i you know he's any video i've ever done on vex is about is me responding to something he said about me right so it's, I've never just made a video about Vec, but you know, he's just, he's taking his free time just to be talking about me. So that's, you know, this is clearly, uh, you know, he's clearly the one getting back, you know, karma. You know, I actually, I, I do view myself as a, a, a bodhisattva that's here to spread enlightenment across the earth and, you know, to spread truth and righteousness. And that's why I'm making this video. My, um, you know, my name is, is very, very, important to me and it being clear and clean is very very important so the utmost important you know importance because you know truth and justice is very very important to me the percent it's like it's like one percent but you still get one percent like crazy dudes just and it, speaking of percent um you know um peace to all the gods and, and the earth as far as the five percent nation you know, I, you know, we could call Vect a, a five percenter, but uh, he knows a lot about hip hop. So I would say he's, I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry, not a five percenter. Call him an eighty-five percenter, <laughs> but he knows a lot of, about hip hop. You know, he knows a lot about hip hop. So he's more of a ten percenter. So he knows what, what, what righteousness is, and you know, he knows the, what the right thing is, and. But, you know, like he's probably got records on his wall that say, you know, the, what the right thing is. But, you know, he, uh, you know, is choosing to keep an all Euro diaspora, you know, kind of fan base and, you know, uh, and uh, literally uh, bullying and trolling a, a black male DJ. Right. And, uh, and another thing, too, is, uh, you know. For instance, like uh, my friend, home, my homie uh, Brian Procell was at a Guar show, and he was telling me that at that Guar show, they brought in a dummy, like a mannequin or something, and then they started beating down the dummy and the mannequin. And he said that the 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 mannequin was actually a black person. So, you know, that you know took obviously you know you could say hey it was just a random mannequin, but you know that it takes on you know racial. Uh, uh, overtones, right? So anytime a, a group of the European diasporas is uh, bullying a person of, um, you know, of the black cast like myself, it's it's a clear racial factor. It's not just, you know, um, a, a beef issue, a simple beef issue. Because like I was saying before, if you have a group of 10 men surround a woman and they all scream at her, it doesn't matter. They don't have to call her the B word or say anything d dealing with her womanness or femininity. All they have to do is scream at her and say she's whack. And that's a sexist thing. So anytime a group of men 
are group are 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 uh, ganging up on a woman, that's called sexism. Anytime a group of Europeans are ganging up on an African diaspora person like myself, a Moorish American, then that's called racism. Okay, so let's. It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> okay, metal beat three. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So, yeah, the first two. All right, so I'm going to press stop on that. All right. So, you know, now we've uh, talked about, um, you know, Euro diaspora individuals um, bullying black males. Um, I'm going to uh, type in the history of that. Let's, th let's talk about the actual history. I'm going to type, um, let's say, um, all right, so segregation, slander of black busyness. So black entrepreneurs during the Jim Crow area, and, and I wanted to, I want to point out that I'm actually the first uh, in my family, I'm the very first in my family to be able to go to school with uh, the Caucasian class, um, um, cast. I'm, I'm the very first in my family. So Jim Crow laws first enacted in the 1880s by angry, resentful, resentful Southern Euro diaspora people against freed African Americans separated the black caste from the white caste in all aspects of life, favoring the white caste and repressing the black caste. This became an into institutionalized form of inequality. All right, so this is Jimmy Crow, all right? This was a, a, a stereotype that was put out there to defame us, just like how Beck's defaming me, right? And not, and I, I'm gonna I might have to drop a like a Vect you know mixtape or something, you know a, a response because he's just going so hard as far as dissing me like he's really 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 you know um, really really dissing me and I'm uh, you know I, I try to be uh, you know silent about a lot of things in the past but you know I can't be silent anymore. All right, so Jim the Jim Crow character was first created for a minstrel show actor in the 1830s. The act featuring a white cast actor wearing black makeup which is similar to what Vex's doing, you know, as far as, you know, wearing the hat to the side and, you know, he talks, um, you know, he, he likes to make money from black culture, but he's not actually, uh, you know, he's not giving back to black culture and he's, you know, just, and he's keeping black DJs down, right? So um, now, let's see, now in Plessy versus, in the Plessy versus Ferguson case of 1896, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that states had the legal power to require segregation between the black caste and the white caste. And I say caste because it's a caste system, because there, there are no actual people that are these colors, right? It's a caste, right? Just like you have the ancient Hindu caste system with Brahmins on the top, right? And Dalits on the bottom. That's what, you know, that that's what the black caste, my caste, is basically like the Dalits, right? And that's Vect hating on the Dalits, right? So Jim Crow laws spread across the South virtually anywhere that the two races might come in contact, right? And it also it's important to note that they call it race, which is clearly a competition and clearly Vect, Vect sees me as some type of competition, but I don't see his, him as competition, all right? And if he wants to battle me, he can battle me, but I know he's not because he's got too many trophies, right? Um, all right, so in the North and the Midwest, segregation became equally entrenched through informal customs and practices. Many of these laws and practices lasted until the 1960s until, all, until outlawed by, 19, by the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So that's what I've been saying. So, you know, let's, let's backtrack. So that's like, what, um, that's like 21 plus 6, that's 27, that's a lot, a lot of years, to, um, plus another... Um, uh, plus another 30. So that's that's a lot, a lot of years, right? That's like, what, 57 years? That's a lot, a lot of years, right? But it's not a lot of years, right? It's, that's less than a lifetime, right? So ever since the 60s, right? Um, you know, that's why I'm the first free generation. I was born in 79. And, you know, in 79, you know, we just had equal rights. So, you know, we see all this, you know, this is whites only colored, you know, um, 
Vect and his Reddit trolls are doing the same things that people did in the past. So we're going to learn a little bit about that. So it took a great deal of courage, resilience, and strength of character for African Americans to maintain their self-respect and battle daily humili the daily humiliation of Jim Crow, right? And you, we see that Vect is, hum is seeking to humiliate me on a daily basis or weekly basis all the time. The black church, self-help organizations, and men's and women's clubs offered refuge, support, protection, while the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People provided potential legal assistance. All right. So out of the demeaning environment of Jim Crow arose the opportunity for some African Americans to establish their own businesses. Right? The more cut off the black communities became from white communities, and the more the white businessmen refused to cater to black customers, like VECT, the more possible it became for entre um, enterprising black entrepreneurs to create viable businesses of their own. So we just saw Vex saying, don't buy anything from Radon, right? So he's, he, this is a tradition. It's not like, you know, it's not a new thing. There's a very, very long tradition of Euro diaspora males on the North American continent um, of uh, not only uh, defaming and smearing black business, but, you know, um, doing their best to thwart and discourage people from supporting black businesses. So most of these businesses were local, small scale and family run, like my business, right? Many black entrepreneurs followed the tenets of Booker T. Washington, who had established the National Business League in 1900 to promote economic self-help. I also created the United Turntables Guild to uh, protect the rights of, of DJs. Um, you know, because a lot of uh, mostly DJs who are discriminated against, so that's women and, uh, you know, uh, black cast people, Asian cast, you know, all the different casts out there in our caste system, right? Um, Washington advocated economic development as the best path to racial advancement and the means to eventually challenging the racial prejudice of Jim Crow. While Washington's precepts would become increasingly out of step with the times, especially when the civil rights movement gained momentum, the support, for, the support for his ideas among black entrepreneurs of the Jim Crow era is repeatedly evident in the naming of businesses after Washington. All right. So that's just, uh, yeah, just a little, uh, little history of that for those that didn't know. All right. So these are black businesses. And, you know, we had to fight hard just to be able to have regular businesses, just to be able to DJ at a party. Uh, my grandfather was one of these people, actually. My grandfather started a record store in the, uh, 19, uh, uh, in the 1940s, after the war. Right after the war, he started a record store. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to, uh, um, to wrap it up. I'm going to go to Instagram slash TTM Academy. And I'm going to show my actual grandfather. So shout out to my grandfather up in heaven, right? Now let me go to, let me scroll down a little bit, find where it is. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is my grandmother right there. Um, and you can see, this is, it's, it was called Bronzeville Records. So he had, he was selling jukeboxes. The main thing he was doing was selling jukeboxes. That's where his bread and butter was coming from. He was selling jukeboxes to the people in like, you know, at clubs and juke joints and stuff like that. Um, and this was back in, uh, I think, so yeah, 1948, all the way back to 1948, my uh, grandfather opened a record store in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I didn't even know that until maybe like in the past 10 years, I recently found out from my aunts. And I had no idea until they told me. And, and I, so I was already a DJ before I found out, you know, I had been DJing for decades before I found out that uh, my grandfather was actually a DJ, all right? So that's that's very interesting. Um, so yeah, it was, it was called Bronzeville Records. Um, yeah, so let's go to here. So this is him, this is my grandfather. This is my father, uh, he was a doctor. Um, he passed away when I was about three, but yeah, my father, uh, he was a radiologist. He actually got uh, perfect scores in, uh, in medical school. He got a 4.0. Um, uh, and in college too, in college and medical school, he got perfect grades, you know, you know, um, so he was, he was a genius and this was his father. So my grandfather, yeah, he opened a record store in 19, about 1948. And these are my aunts. Uh, this is Gloria who just 
passed away actually um very sad but she's actually in uh my film skater girl um that vect will be getting a copy of um when it's sent out with all the other kickstarter supporters right and this is my other aunt connie all right and she still lives in milwaukee but uh gloria was a hardcore new yorker and she actually passed away in in new york in the bronx last last summer all right so yeah so this is uh yeah to wrap things up you know we've come a very very long way and we're not going to let people like vect and and whoever dj curry all these weird trolls in their bedrooms um on their bongs uh you know try to um you know bring us down so we're not going to let these types of people bring us down we're going to continue to push forward all right and that's it <laughs>